Welcome back, everybody, to a game we have not played in what feels like a very, very long time. A mod we haven't actually played in what feels like a very, very long time. Of course, that being Elder Kings. Always glad to be back playing Elder Kings. We put up a poll roughly about last week. Might have been slightly longer than that now, where I basically said, what do people want to see for the next CK2 series? And joint first place was a three-way tie between Elder Kings, the Avatar mod, and Warhammer Geheimnis Stacks. Now, seeing as Geheimnis Nacht is currently undergoing a big update, I figured it was probably best to delay that one. And seeing as we've just had a month of Weeb, I figured it would be too soon to go into the Avatar mod. And that left one fairly obvious choice. That, of course, being Elder Kings. Specifically, though, the people requested Elder Kings Rise to Power. There was recently a patch put out by... Let me just quickly pull this up here, because I think credit is deserved. Speaking from experience, trying to make a patch for Rise to Power to work with any other total conversion is... A massive undertaking. So if this ends up working well, you've got, you've got to give them credit where it's due. So this was posted by No Sleeper to uh, the Steam Workshop, of course. Full links to uh, Elder Kings and this and all the other mods we've got. And full credit is, of course, down in the description. Remember to go and like and favorite mods you enjoy, etc, etc. Let's dive in. I'm really interested to see how they've done this. Because, again, I, I've, I've sort of messed around doing some comp patches before talking to Might Night about it. And my god, it is incredibly complex. I've come up with a little scenario for us as well. I was kind of talking through it with some people on Discord. I was like, what would we want to do if we were going to do a Rise to Power series in the Elder Kings? There were some sort of fairly obvious but kind of cliche ones like playing as a Dragonborn, for example. I thought that was kind of the most obvious one. But then we kind of took it in a weird direction. I'm pretty happy with what happened with the result. So we are going to be playing in the second era of the Alliance War. For those of you who played Elder Scrolls Online, this is going to be a very familiar setting. It's the three different... Factions, I can't remember what they're called. It's not like I only played like 20 hours of Elder Scrolls Online. Didn't really hold my attention, I'll be honest. Um, but this will be just that setting. So for those of you who played that, this should be very straightforward. Long story short, you've got the Aldmeri Boon and you've got the Ebonheart Pact, I think they're called. And then the other one. And then Cyrodiil right now is currently being puppet mastered by Manny Marco and Molag Bal by extent. Big old invasion going on, kind of similar to if you've ever played Oblivion. Kind of similar to what Mehrun Stegen did there, except instead it's Molag Bal. Anyway, we are not going to be playing as any particular character because I made a little bit of a setup for us here. Just going to pick a random count to start. And of course, with Rise to Power, we will be uh, we're basically taking over and, and changing them and, and obviously not having a title there. Let's dive in. I'm excited to show you what we've got. I think this is going to be quite a fun series because it's got a hell of a challenge associated with it too. Rise to Power is obviously always more... More challenging anyway, just because of the way it works. But this is this is kind of dialing up a little bit more beyond that. I think we've got kind of a unique mechanic to it too. But I'll, again, I'll show you that in a second. Thank you for playing Rise to Power. Please understand it's not by means an easy mod that will be challenging even for experienced players. Dynasties will be whipped out and tears be spilled. Make sure to turn notification events in the message settings to priority two in order to not miss any out and the important notifications to tutorials. Pretty sure I got that turned on. Might be wrong though. Anyway. You wake up sweating in the middle of nowhere. Who am I? What happened? Is he sleepwalking? Or perhaps you just had too many drinks last night. Whatever it was, you are now slowly be beginning to remember who you are. We can go for the the hard start now. Since I've last played both Elder Kings and Rise to Power, both have had significant updates that seems to make things from the very brief amount I've played. Just to make sure, of course, everything's working. It looks incredible. I'm actually very much impressed by the amount of progress both of them have had. So this is going to be hopefully a fresh experience on top of a kind of familiar background. So we've got Bastard, of course, uh, requires adoption of a nobility. The hardest start there. You have really have to claw your way up for that one. Fields are not going to tend themselves. I don't know exactly what the difference between these are. Um, cannot learn how to read. Oh. Needs to learn to read in order to hold council positions. I feel like we'll just go with Lowborn. Um, mainly because it kind of suits the scenario I've got set up too, which you'll see in a second. I now have the Thief Burst sign. That might be appropriate because I'm going to go to our decision menu. You can see here we have the option to continue... The Great Journey. I've written a little bit of uh, I've written a little bit of story here. All the dialogue I've ripped from every Elder Scrolls game. So if you don't like the dialogue, if you're thinking, boy, this is a cringe fest, you can send your complaints courtesy of at Todd Howard on Twitter. I don't know if that's actually his handle. Please don't do that. <clears throat> so I figured we've played as uh, we've played as the Aliens. We've played as the Dwemer. We, of course, played as Imperials last time, and apparently I played as slow, but I don't know about you guys, but I certainly don't remember that one. So this time around, we've got my man, this guy, who I won't spoil it quite yet, chiming in. <clears throat> that's, that's a great pun. Your ancestors traveled a great journey for generations in the hopes of finding the promised land spoken of by Veloth. 
Many who followed settled in the land of Resdane, but your sect believed that Veloth was led astray and the true home of your people was elsewhere. Almost all of your, not elsewhere, is in the province. Almost all of your ancestors who spurned Resdane headed further north to the islands of Kathnaki. Yet a handful of pilgrims, including your progenitors, spread far and wide across Cyrodiil. You're the last of your kin, continuing the journey out of reverence of your fallen ancestors. But the sudden outbreak of war has threatened your very way of life. What was that? Probably just the wind. That's not his canon voice. That's just an impression that man what's in Skyrim. Speaking of that man what's in Skyrim, you're passing through a small imperial town when you're blindsided by a swift blow to the back of the head. The next thing you know, you wake up at the back of a horse-drawn cart next to two Nords, one of which is gagged. The unbound Nord looks at you and speaks. Hey you, you're finally awake. You were trying to cross the... B I'm not going to do the whole thing. You, you, you know the meme. You were trying to explain that you have no part in the war, but the Nord just laughs and calls you a typical high elf, always trying to pull off some sort of trick. Boethia, deliver me from the servants of Molobel or Veloth. My journey may have ended. So we can either become cult of Boethia directly or we can follow the ways of High uh, of, of Veloth, become High Velothi like the Ashlanders in Morrowind and take the cult of Boethia as our secret kind of sect. Velothi gods are... Oh God, I've got to try and remember off the top of my head now. This is going to be... This is not going to work. Uh, Boethia, Mephala and Azura or something like that. Um... Might have been my father in hindsight. I don't remember. But obviously it's the three gods that were that were kind of superseded by the Arm Civi. Let's just go for let's go for this one. Why not? That way we've got choice, right? We can either stick with High Bella for a while and become the cult of Boethia. I'm not sure about if there are any punishments associated. I don't really remember. Normally when we've played as a as as a Daedra worshipper, we've done it as uh we, we've done it as a ruler, you know, kind of an untouchable, but now we are just a random courtier. That's a little different. And now we're in prison. As is every good Elder Scrolls game start, we are starting in the dungeon of Empress Regent Clevia. Slevia? I have no idea how you would say that. Sleviathan, uh, Abnathan's daughter. We've actually kind of played in this bookmark previously. We, I'm pretty sure, assassinated La Abnathan last time we played, didn't we? We were like his protege and then we ended up murdering him. So we're kind of around that same time frame, for those of you who saw, saw the last Elder King series that we did here. And that's it. Campaign's over. I guess we're in prison. Let me just... Sorry, that, that would have been better timing if I was actually playing... Ah, oh, there we go. If I was actually playing on the right speed. You hear that? The guards are coming for you. Hee hee hee. Cries the dark elf in the cell opposite. Or apparently George R. R. Martin giving that laugh. Clearly another prisoner of the war dragged down into the Imperial prison to rot without so much as a second glance. A single guard approaches your cell and opens the metal gate. They remove their helmet, yet under the Imperial steel is a chimer. Chimer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say chimer all the time. It's chimer, but it's spelt... It's spelt Chima. You can blame fucking... What's his name? Kirkbride? You can blame him for that one. They remove their helmet. Yet under the Imperial Steel is a Kaima, Like yourself. It's not until they speak that you realize something is terribly wrong. I have a purpose for you which might you might prove useful. But first I must test the deafness of your guile and the strength of your purpose. The guard produces a curved knife and hands it to you before opening the door to the cell of the Dumber who mocked you. If you can learn to be subtle and render in death, perhaps I will share my power with you. Could it be the Devourer of Trinamac? Whoever that is. <clears throat> Oh no, guards. Guards, assassin sobs the Dunmer, who I assume is named something along the lines of uh, Draylon Veth. As you enter the cell, after all, how could you possibly refuse a request from Boethia themselves? After generations of travel, this is the greatest sign your lineage have ever received from the gods. You quickly dispatch the Dark Elf, and upon a turning around to look at Boethia once more, you hear, Stop right there, criminal scum. <laughs> Why is this? This is, this is just the worst. Is it, of all the intros I've done for every series ever, this is maybe somewhere near the bottom. The guard that was once Boethia is no longer, but instead is a plain Imperial Watchman. You find to defend yourself, expected to be cut down in a cruel trick by the Prince of Deceit. Yet instead, you cut through the guard's armor like butter. He falls to the grounds in a pool of... Grounds? Plural. In a, in a pool of blood. A great laughter erupts from all around. You have done well, my champion. My enemy, Molag Bell, is a true puppet master of this realm, and you are the only one who holds the name Boethia in you heart. Come on, Boethia. Grammarly's like fucking three quid a month, my man. Undo his control, and I will grant you what you could desire. As you will it, so it shall be. We gain the trait, Doom Driven. What could that possibly mean? Uh, apparently this is something new they've recently added to the Outer Kings, which essentially allows you to become a kind of a hero, rather than just becoming a Dragonborn, which is again very generic. You know, the, the hero of Oblivion wasn't a Dragonborn after all. You can take control of prophecy, but in a way that doesn't mean that you're a magical man what shouts things very loud. And with that, we are free. We are free from our Imperial prison. Where are we right now? We're kicking around in Abner Thorn's court. King Abner of Nimbane is our liege. We are Hyvalothi. Uh, who was it? It was Boethia, the ancestors, and... Se oh, I guess we just give a... 
We just we just like Boethia. Boethia was kind of a big deal, hence the whole Boethia thing. That was that was pretty much the point there. Uh, and then we can, of course, split to the full-blown cult of Boethia. It does say special features is considered a fringe religion, which is what I was a little bit afraid of immediately diving on the, the Boethia train. I feel like we might have just ended up being clapped. Now, our character was mostly randomly de generated. The stats are based on our start. Very similar to what, of course, we did the first time around when we played Rise to Power. So we get zero in our base stats, and, and our only stats come from our traits. So we've actually got kind of lucky here. We've got Zealous, Greedy, Absent-Minded, obviously not good. Envious, Deceitful. Deceitful suits it, given that Boethia is like Prince of... Um, it's very generic. Very similar to kind of Mayrune's Dagon and uh, Molag Bal. It's kind of like Destruction and Deceit and yada, yada, yada. Um, fantastic. Okay, cool. Does it, does it say there? Evil God names Ebonar, Molag Bell, Vermilia, and Trinamax. So we don't like Molag Bell, which is pretty appropriate given that we're right in the center. Our goal for this series then, and this is a really cool mechanic. I'm not entirely sure when they added this, but it's a great idea, is to take control of the towers and destroy the realm. Uh, destroy. I should have installed the landmarks mod, damn it. That's a lot better. So anyway, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit of Outer Scrolls lore here. Last time I did this, I had people frothing at the mouth. Coder is the best book ever written. Very angry at me because I try to simplify. Honestly, just shit writing. I'm going to say it. Some of the Outer Scrolls expanded lore is just fucking god awful. Towers are technically canon now, though, because they were added in Skyrim. And towers are essentially in Outer Scrolls lore... The thing that holds up the sky, to put it as metaphorically as possible. Um, they, they essentially keep the, the the Earth in the Elder Scrolls world grounded. And that's basically all you need to know. The implications are, if we take all the towers... And I'm not entirely sure what happens. Because I've never done this before. And I thought it was a really, really cool thing that they've just added to the mod. That I've decided, this is what we're going to do. We are going to bring about the apocalypse single-handedly. If we control all of the towers, we can turn them over to a to a to a Daedric god that we worship, which in this case, of course, is Boethia. If we take possession of the uh, the, the tower, so this one is Adamantia, then we've got Crystal Light Law somewhere in there it is in King's Heaven in Somerset Isles. If we manage to grab all of those, we can give them to uh, we can give them to Boethia and basically end the world, which I thought would be just about the most ambitious thing you could do to go from a lowborn to Ending everything? That sounds pretty fun. I can get on board with that. I forgot to mention our name as well. Um, we are... <laughs> we are Bog Grimer the Kymer. Uh, mighty hero and doom-driven champion of Boethia. I don't think we're technically the champion of Boethia yet. I think we have, I think we have quite a way to go. But we do have 2,000 points with Boethia. Because um, I can't imagine he, she has many other friends kicking around in... Tamriel right now, or especially Cyrodiil, given, you know, my man Molag Bell. So what can we do then? Um, where do we want to start? Now, I was kind of thinking this is kind of cool. We've got access to the to the off-map powers. Now, normally with Rise to Power, you kind of want to go around, recruit some troops, get yourself some land, whatever order you want to do it. Of course, last time we played Rise to Power, we ended up recruiting a load of troops, going to different capitals, things like that. Before that, we ended up working our way through a noble dynasty and becoming landed. This gives us access to Dramora. We could get an army from Boethia, which we could use to conquest somewhere. Do we even have any Cassus Belli as a lowborn? I'm, I'm pretty sure we don't. Um, no, we don't. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. But eventually, we could get we, we could get landed. We could, I believe, we can obviously find a, found a mercenary band in base rise to power. We'll just basically have to see what we've got here. Wow, look at this. Um, there it is. And that's exactly what I was talking about there. I didn't know we had access to it yet because we are... Because we're just an unlanded... Just an unlanded peasant, basically. Uh, but you can see there that if we have Adamantia or some of the other towers, they, they go off the screen there. Uh, and we have a thousand points with a particular a particular Daedra, we can, we can hand it over. We also have to be Herald of the Great Army. I wonder how we get that. That sounds fun. Okay, well, I guess our first goal then is to become Herald of the Great Army of Boethia. Then by deactivating the towers, we basically let Oblivion into, into uh, Nern, and that's the end. We've done it. So, what can we do then? Right now, we've got to do shit like, you know, grow turnips and sell them off and, and find employment as a, as a shoe shiner or whatever else we've got to do to kind of survive here. So, employment list is to employ courtes. Okay, not too relevant right now. We can employ an orphan. That actually might be relevant. Um, found a religious cult is kind of fun. Now, I believe this mod adds uh, the ability to kind of go around preaching as well. So, we can go to... Where are we right now? We're in Abnathan's capital, right? 
Yeah, and he's in prison by Manny Marco. So I believe we can, like, uh, preach in particular zones, right? Where, where are we right now? Um, residing in Skinnia. Oh, right. I've clicked the wrong bloody province. Okay, here we are. Um, so I believe we can we can do things like preach and, and, and sort of strange things like that. Don't know exactly. Oh, there it is. Like preach religion. Obviously, recruit volunteers is how we get ourselves an army. Um, need eight gold to get ourselves some volunteers. We've got a long way. We've got a long way from the bottom here. I don't really remember quite how we managed last time. Oh, can we join a guild? Oh, that would be cool. That's a really interesting way to get through Rise to Power, right? Is actually going through a guild because the money the guild gives you when you're a ruler is pretty irrelevant normally. You know, like 25 gold for teaching someone how to fire off a fireball. But for us, that's a massive amount of cash that we wouldn't normally get. Found a holy order. Oh, shit. Is that how we become the... Uh, no, 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 no. Thanks for my seat on the outer council. Excuse me? <laughs> uh, not sure about that one. Wait, are we on the Elder Council? What the fuck? As an advisor. Oh, that's the dude we replaced. I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave that. I feel like that's a... Maybe it might have been a bit of a... Yeah, no, I won't focus on that. We're not supposed to be part of the Elder Council. Don't, that's not... It's not relevant. The question is, though, what can we join? More act on the Thieves' Guild. I feel like the Thieves' Guild would be a good start. You know, we, we worship uh, Boethia. Intrigue-based god. We've got a decent amount of intrigue as well. We've got an experienced agent. Again, we got Deceitful and... Different things that give us bonuses too, and, and obviously the thief seems to be prime thieves guild fodder there. Let's see if we can get in, and then that will give us access to obviously our training and whatever else. Fighting the arena, I feel like he's gonna. We're just gonna get our ass handed to us. What's our personal combat right now? Fifty-two is not bad. Experienced agent gives ten. Doom driven, sorry, doom driven gives ten. Experienced agent gives thirty. We got our sword from Boethia that we used to murder my man Trail and Beth. All right, fair enough. I should really rename that sword. Um, man. Something to do with Draylon Veth. Oh, Pitiless Justice is an ode to those damn scales you get when you kill Valen Dreth in Oblivion. Those useless damn scales that, like, drain your personality or something ridiculous like that. Perfect. I like it. Okay, so hopefully the... All oh, right, so we've got low rank as well. That's because, funnily enough, we are we are low rank. We lose prestige. We're also lowborn as well, so we lose even more prestige. Incredible. Oh, hello. I overheard a group of soldiers excitedly discuss an invasion being organized by... Ceres of Diedrich Horde against Primarch Arian of Eldmary Dominion. Uh, the cult of Molag Bell. Do we want to join <laughs> the cult of Molag Bell to attack the Eldmary Dominion? I feel like that's not for us. I feel like that couldn't be more, more opposite than what we want. I've spoken to several alleged Thieves Guild contacts and their tips will let me to a secluded spot where I meet Lord Budimir of Noshira. I ask about joining. It explains his group's goals. Remember, the name says it all. We're thieves. We may be outlaws, but we do not steal and do not murder. Ugh. I mean, it's a means to an end, isn't it, really? It, it's, a, it's a way to get ourselves on the ladder a little bit. After agreeing to join, Budamiro inducted me into the Thieves Guild. I'm now uh, officially a member. Excellent. Thank you, my man. What's this button? Game was started on... Second era. Been going for zero. Oh, so it's just uh, an alternate rewriting of the uh, date system. Got it. Dragon Ball and other Doom Driven heroes will appear often to defeat the current crisis. That's us, by the way. Poorly managed rams can be a target of Warlord Uprising. Uh, current events. No Dragon Ball has been revealed in the world. A Daedra Prince is currently invading Tamriel, of course, more like Bell. Dragon Fires are out. The barrier between Nern and Oblivion is weakened. And the Amulet of Kings remains hidden. Now, as far as I know, you can't actually add extra buttons to the CK2 interface. Uh, hello? Is that Meridia? <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, very good. Oh, I like that. That's a really cool system, though. Add adding uh, a better date system that actually matches matches Elder Scrolls. Fine. What do we want to do for our focus, then? I feel like business would be a good play. Um, we could go with Intrigue. What can I do with Intrigue, though? Nothing particularly useful, I think. I mean, Spying On wouldn't be massive again, because we don't have any courses. Obviously, we can't make a move against people. Um... I feel like business might be a good starting play just to see if we can. I doubt we can debase the mints. It's worth a go, isn't it? Worst case scenario, we just swap ourselves back out. Now, does this have... Right, so this has the ambition system found in Rise to Power. What that does is characters are basically locked to a, a lifetime ambition, sort of sim style, I guess. Um, so this guy, for example, has a burning passion related to anything related to beauty. Gives us plus 10 sex appeal permanently. Um... 
Okay, I mean, that's not too bad to say that we're the founding member of our dynasty. We could actually do with maybe getting married as soon as possible. Um, Svagrim of Huffingar is declaring war on uh, a, a Lapkane of the Reach. No, well, we're definitely not going to be getting into any combat anytime soon. It might pay well, but we're also maybe die horribly without an heir. Well, I've no idea what this says. I've, I've absolutely no idea what this event means, so we're just going to have to pass over that one. Uh, what do you want? Just the banner and the product. Look, if, if Boethia offers us, if, if a, if a Kainas and a Boethia says, hey, what is this? Adventurer. Oh, that's quite cool. Um, then obviously we'll join it. That seems like absolutely on brand. And uh, maybe that's what the... Let's, see, let's go visit Guildhall again. Found a Holy Order. Maybe that's exactly what that does. I don't know if that's maybe a leftover mechanic from Rise to Power that's not intended to work with Elder Kings. Um, it's supposed to be true. So we mustn't be on a journey on a pilgrimage or something else. Uh, personal wealth of 200, favor of 200 as well. Interesting, okay. Um, and we can't do anything for the guild yet by the looks of it. Well, let's go ahead and select a patron deity. Uh, so we've got Azura, Boethia, and Mafala. Oh, I was right. Holy shit. Uh, I guess we go for conspiracy, war, and plots. Again, suits everything we're doing here. Let's do it. And what does that actually give us? Intrigue? Marshal? Counts as worshipping Boethia. Oh, that's quite cool. So what that, that means is we could renounce our secret religion. I, I believe we still have access to the off-map screen. We wouldn't do that. What happens, though, if we were to pick, say, say, Azura as well? Would we... I assume that would give us access to both Boethia and Azura. Now, you can do that in, in regular other games. We've done it before by having one is your primary religion and then one is your secret religion. I think we've got to stay on brand here. We've got to go with Boethia. We've got to stick with Boethia. Challenge authorities. Do not fall for their lives, but craft your own to counter their leadership. Always subjugate the weak and topple the mighty. Karl Marx. Thank you. Uh, is now my patron. Excellent. Ten favor. We're well on the way to founding that holy order, huh? And we've got to nominate a successor. Now, I will admit, I do have something that I want to try. We could try and get ourselves a Dramora Kin Marcher. I don't know if they can spawn female. If they spawn female, we could just marry a Dramora Kin Marcher and have half... Half Kaima, half Dramora children. That, I think, would be pretty fucking cool. But I don't know if that's possible. I don't even know if they have fertility. I did just have a look. It is, unfortunately, female equals no. But if we had ourselves a daughter and did that, we could then potentially have the... <laughs> have the half Dramora Kin. I don't even know if that would work. I, I've just noticed that there is a trait that is like a... Uh, like Daedric Scion or something like that. Um, there might be another way to do that. Anyway. Uh, martial expertise. Ask Boethia to hone your abilities in the ways of war. This will give you a random tier one leadership trait. Oh, cool. Okay. Wealth of Oblivion. That could be quite good. What do we need for Ebony Male? Uh, all of the following must be true. Publicly follows it. Or with Dragonborn. I see. Okay. Um, and we also have to have... So we are long-lived because we are... We are a Merce, so that would be 5,000 Arda. Good God. What about Goldbrand? 5,000 again, same story. Daedric Training? I don't remember what that does. It's just like one random stat, isn't it? So that's really not going to be very good. Lesser Daedric Horde would be incredible. The 5,000... So 2,000 Arda. Daedric Policy is interventionist. Right, so we've got to wait for Boethia to really kick it up a notch. Apparently Boethia is the... Uh, is the, 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 the Daedra most likely to actually get involved with Mortal Affairs. So... I don't know if that'll have any bearing whatsoever on the game mechanics, but that might be worthwhile. Uh, let's pray. And that gives you a random modifier, right? Diplomatic favor. Hey, that's fine. We probably should decide where we want to start off. Going to the Imperial Isle and preaching about Boethia seems like it could be either a great way to start or a great way to get beheaded. At the local fair, which comes alive in the mid-afternoon, the bustling square smells of perfumes and sweet fruits ripe to bursting. The earthiness of ale and hay. There's a lot going on there. I stopped to gaze idly on the bolts of rich cloth I cannot afford, not even daring to touch. Uh, there's a lady. Nice day, my lady. Uh, we immediately marry her. My God. Uh, or she isn't my type. She isn't. Because she's not, she's not Kaima. Uh, and it would be an interracial marriage. And the problem with that is, of course, the chance of kids being born is very, very slim. And the chance of actually being Kaima is even slimmer. Because there's obviously low chance of having in the first place, right? Um, I believe as well... Uh, is it not inheritance, uh, racial inheritance mechanics always follow the mother? So they would only ever be born Imperial? Nah. We need to, can we invite someone to our court? Can we, is there anyone at all that would join us? Join court? Yes. There's a Dunma. Um, does that count as interracial if it's too mer? I'm not entirely sure, but she's the only person in the world that wants to join us for whatever reason. 
Trying to ambition sex appeal. Ah, oh, nice. That's what it is. She's heard of his sex appeal from the other side of the planet. Incredible. I'm never too busy for a good talk. I accept your invitation. Boom. Uh, oh, but we can't we can't ask for marriage though, can we? Because we're lowborn. Bollocks. Um, we could just seduce her. We could just could just seduce her. But for a game plan then, let's just get four gold. Let's scrounge up four gold wherever the hell we can find it. Hopefully the uh, hopefully the society will start chucking us some quests at the, the, the guild. We want to move to the Imperial Isle. That's four gold to move to a round white gold tower. Uh, and then when we're there, the goal becomes buy ourselves a house. How, could, how do we claim nobility? We have to be able to read and we have to have 400 prestige. Finding the arena is the way we've always done it in the past, but I feel like there's got to be a better way to do it this time. I, I don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over in Rise to Power, so I want to I go for something unique, something fresh this time. Maybe the guild would be a great way to do that. Because surely we get, yeah, we do get prestige from getting to the higher levels. So what? We've spent our life on the road. We're trained. We're, a, we're an okay fighter. And as far as I recall, they always tend to be around your level. Oh my god, he's going to fucking wipe us out. The man's a gladiator. 60 versus 56. Uh, you know what? <laughs> Fuck this. I mean, that's not far off the truth, but it is 50 prestige and craven. I think I'd rather just accept getting our ass handed to us. Um, one of four options will happen. Oh. Oh, are you guaranteed a victory? Oh, I thought there was a chance that we could actually get... Maybe we can. Maybe I shouldn't Maybe I shouldn't read too much into this. Dual experience increases. Give me that. Oh, we got 11 gold. Ah, oh, fuck. We do actually... Yeah, we do actually have to duel him, though. Just says about my pitiless justice in the side of his head. High now manages to actually hurt me. Dizzy, I can just about make out the sounds of the crowd. It's not my name near chancing. Wounded. Swollen wrist. Health minus 0.25. And he also gets wounded, though. Oh, God. What a terrible start. We did get enough gold to move to the Imperial City. So that's exactly where we're going to go. Oh, nice. I've recently found myself talking to him for hours about the finer points of climate, culture, and etiquette. I can't imagine there are too many of them kicking around, huh? There's no shame in acknowledging a worthy opponent. Uh, he's staying over there. That's fine. So we are now in the Imperial Isle because it says there where you are. I completely forgot that was a thing. White Gold Tower. Nice. And apparently our successor is Abnathan. A little bit strange. Oh, no. I require a steady income. I wish to climb the ladders of society. I can self-employ myself and begin as a beggar. I mean, what else can we do? Wounded. We have absolutely nothing to go on here. We're, we're, in, we're in a completely foreign realm. Take the job. Sure, why not? Did you know that competing in four arena matches going to gladiator trait? Say no more. Say no more. We might as well go for that, right? So let's mark that special interest. And then see how far begging gets us. And what is this guy? You are... Yeah, Cult of Moloch Bell again. I imagine they're all going to be Cult of Moloch Bell, aren't they? Oh, shit. That was easy. All around the world, the reports of the Daedric Hordes fading away. We have not suffered a major setback from the force of the invading prince, and their ports to oblivion seem to have disappeared. The invasion is over, but the uh, the dragonflies are burning. Someone is in possession of the Amulet of Kings. Who? Uh, excuse me. Who has, who has this? Who has, who has the Amulet? Uh, excuse me. Have you got the Outer Cancel Amulet? Uh, okay. Sure. Oh my god, it's a dragonborn with the Amulet of Kings. Zarya at Nazir, Rahal, Forebear. And she's a journeyman sword singer. That's quite cool. A sword singer dragonborn, and she's got the amulet. Maybe that's just a, a sort of predestined thing to close the to close the gates. That's annoying, because that's gonna make our job a lot, lot harder, because now we have to also kill the dragonborn. Maybe we should try and get the amulet of kings for ourselves. That would be a hell of a thing to pull off with our first character. I spent a whole life dedicated to the Thieves Guild. Bear in mind, we're an elf, so we live for a hell of a long time. We're a very young elf, too. We're only 43. We could work away through the Thieves Guild and try and st pull off the ultimate high. Steal the am Amulet of Kings. Alinor Falls. Whoa. The ancient city of Alinor, capital of the Somerset Island, seat of the Almeri civilization, fell forced to it, uh, led by Empress Regent Clevia. Cle Cle I have no idea how you say that. Uh, reportedly looted and countless artifacts dating back to the Merithic and First Era have been lost for all eternity. Wow. The great cities of the Dominion aren't safe. They actually won against the Aldmeri Dominion? Oh, they've, they've sieged it down. Okay, that's not quite the same thing. Uh, what, what was that? <laughs> I hope that came across in the video because I have no fucking clue what that was. Thieves catches are critical as they allow our agents to resupply on the run. This is cool. Beggar, but... You know, masquerading as a thief. Also masquerading as a secret agent of Boethia. This was out pretty well. A trivial errand. Let's do it. 
I dropped the supplies and various caches in town. I froze when a guard caught me. Simply turned away, pretend to have not seen a thing. Ah, very nice. We've done it. Gained 10 gold, and we also gained 10 luck. It's going to be a hell of a long time to get through that. Oh. You know what that is? Oh. <laughs> Brilliant. Fucking fantastic. We died of our wounds in the first fight. Are you fucking kidding me? We died from just being wounded. Well, thank you all for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this series of uh, of, of Rise to Power in the Elder Kings. I think we did a pretty good job. We lasted all of um, about five minutes. Incredible work. Obviously, I'll reload back to before when he died. If you've got any suggestions, of course, feel free to throw those at me. Things before we really get stuck into the campaign. Very interested to hear what you guys have to think about what we've got going on. Apologies if this has been questionable quality. It's 3 a.m. Stream and I, and I thought I can't wait any longer to get a Crusader Kings 2 video up because it has been a hell of a long time. Tomorrow we will pick up momentum. Consider this a an introduction to the new series more than anything else. Things we're going to have to fucking reload anyway because we died from wounded of all friggin' things. Big thank you goes out, of course, to the Insane Top Tier Level Pensions for making the channel possible in the first place. A thank you goes out to Necrophilin, Noah, Gogolus, Emerald Ghost 11, Odie, Olympia George, Anthony Gawley, Scary Scurvy, Cobalt Lotus, Alex Blue the Bard, Layla, Asana Curiso, Atmosis, Justin Wallace, Michael Mullen, Ben Hoffman, Jonah Waters, and everyone else, of course, at the Insane Tier Lovers on Patreon for making this episode possible in the first place. Thank you to you guys for sticking with it while CK2 has been on a little bit of a break there. Thank you as well to Couch Sitter, Flum, Mason Fireblast, Warcat, Lampy, Emerald Beam, Hey I'm Alex, Hoopalia, Valkyrie, Cowron24, Evan Dragon, 323, Devorder, Attila, Russian Oligarch, Billionaire, Taj, Lazarus, Alta Mostly, Deadly Kitten Hunt, and of course all the other patrons as well, again, for your patience in in waiting for a new series to be to be created. Carefully crafted, as you can tell. Perfect in just about every way.